Hello again everyone and welcome to another landscape photography tour, this time to the beautiful Greek island of Crete. This is one of the greatest holiday and photography locations you could imagine in the Mediterranean, in my opinion. It is jam-packed with mountains, valleys, stunning beaches, beautiful towns and architecture, history, culture and incredible food and wine. You could easily spend two weeks travelling the island and still not catch everything it has to offer. So I'll try and take you through some of its key photographic locations while also telling you what it's like to visit there. In the central north coast of the island lies its capital city of Heracleon, or more properly pronounced Iracleo and it's a pretty busy place with plenty of nightlife, amazing Cretan restaurants serving equally amazing Cretan wine, its narrow winding streets are full of small details and colourful shops and they look extra lovely in the night time. I took this picture with a 10mm lens on a full frame camera with its ultra extreme wide angle field of view and you'll be seeing more of that throughout this video. We visited at the end of October to early November and the weather was absolutely perfect for us as British people, not too hot or too cold and with plenty of sunshine, blue skies and clear ocean. The harbour is particularly worth visiting with its medieval Venetian fortress. A few of the smaller places of interest, including vineyards, are closed at that time of year though. Just south of Heraclio lies the remains of the famous palace of Knossos, capital of the Minoan civilization, considered the earliest civilization of its kind in Europe. Again, tons of opportunities for composing great images lie here. I put that 10mm lens to good use again here to capture this beautiful room almost in its entirety when I couldn't step back any further. An ultra wide angle lens will help you to position yourself in front of all the tourists and still get your picture. I think it's well worth hiring a car to travel the island, particularly as the landscapes are so spectacular that you'll often want to stop. Make sure your batteries are well charged. And dotted around the countryside are plenty of small towns with amazing picturesque squares and restaurants. On the southern coast of the centre of the island lies the famous beach of Matala. It's famous for being full of hippies, basically so you can expect a colourful crowd there. They all showed up in the 60s and took residence in the miniature caves on the cliff on the north side of the beach, probably without realising that they were Roman burial tombs. The beach faces west and so you get some wonderful sunsets here. Now let's travel east a little bit. There are loads of beautiful beaches and small towns all over this direction but we found ourselves travelling to the small port of Plaka which offers views and trips to Spinalonga Island, a former leper colony. There's a famous best selling book by Victoria Hislop called The Island which is based on Spinalonga which my wife and I listened to on a car journey. You can go and visit it if you really want to and there's a drinks bar on the island which rips off tourists shockingly, in fact on Google Maps someone's labelled it the tourist exploitation drinks bar. Moving on a little further southeast lies the incredibly gorgeous town of Agios Nikolaios. Just look at the photographic opportunities here. I used a Sony 24-105mm f4 zoom lens during a lot of this trip and its versatility and sharp image quality really paid off. For nighttime shots like these, you'll definitely want to pack a little travel sized tripod to come with you. Now there's plenty more to see on the east side of the island but we headed out west at this point to the other major town of Hania which we slightly preferred to Iraklio. The old town there is so full of alleyways and hidden spots and the harbour they connect you to is stunning. It's easy to walk along that long barrier and get up close to the lighthouse. Again, here's a shot at 10mm, this time taken with a tripod and an ND1000 filter for a very slow shutter speed for one of my favourite shots of the whole trip. And again, there are beautiful shooting opportunities at night time, particularly in the middle of the streets. This picture shows off the awesome sun stars that particular 10-18mm to lens can get you when you stop down its aperture to f8 or so. Crete is also well known for its exciting gorges which offer some dramatic hiking opportunities. This is Imbros Gorge. 
It's not quite as spectacular as the world famous Samaria Gorge, but my wife was 5 months pregnant at this point and we didn't want to be hiking too far, and the views and the wildlife we saw everywhere was breathtaking. Again, another great opportunity here for getting out your ultra wide angle lens. About an hour eastwards of there, on the southern coastline, lies Preveli Beach. This one is just crazy and well worth a visit. You start in a car park on a steep cliff overlooking everything, and with impressive mountain views of its own, this is on the west side of the beach. Make your way down from there to the picture perfect sands which enjoy sunshine throughout most of the day except later in the evening. But not only that, the gorge which feeds a river into the beach is full of tropical plants that make you feel like you're literally in a rainforest, and once again my extremely wide angle lens really helped me to get amazing pictures here. And finally, let's take a drive all the way to the very southwest of the island. Again, the views of the Cretan countryside as you go along are breathtaking. Elefonisi is one of the most famous beaches on the island. It has some of the clearest waters, most perfect sand, rock pools, and places to explore in shallows, and what's particularly attention grabbing is its slightly pink coloured sand in places. Well, what I've shown you in this video is the result of about 10 days worth of exploring the island, and we've maybe covered about a third of everything there is to see, and most of these pictures are just fairly casually taken. Crete really is a dream location for photography and for relaxing too. A great time to go would be in the early spring or late autumn, in my opinion, avoiding the crowds and the worst of the heat. I do recommend renting a car to get about, although watch out for the island's many hidden speed cameras, and choose hotels that offer their own parking, otherwise even in low season you'll have a very tough time parking in the larger towns, they're a bit crowded. But you should absolutely bring an ultra wide angle lens with you, as well as a good general purpose zoom lens, and do not forget your polarising filters, and maybe even an ND filter and a tripod for some coastal shots with slow shutter speeds. I definitely plan to go back one day to explore everywhere else and make a sequel video to this one. Take care everyone, and God bless.